The only real hope and change you'll ever get is from God. It's going to come from the Lord or it's not going to come at all. It's going to come when you admit that you can't do it and that you've got to have His help. This is the problem in our generation, distractions. I would like to break distraction down into two categories, good distractions and bad distractions. And our world is full of distractions that attempt to pull us away from the one thing that truly matters, and that is our first love, Jesus Christ. Now I ask you today, what is distracting you? Is it a good distraction or a bad distraction? Nonetheless, they are still distractions, nonetheless. Allow me to look at modern day distractions. One, social media and mobile phones. Mobile phones are a good thing. They are wonderful. We can communicate with our loved ones even if they live in a different state or even a different continent. That is wonderful. I can talk to all my grandchildren because of the wonder of technology, and that is wonderful. However, although mobile phones are good, they can be a distraction. I don't have social media, but my children and grandchildren do and they tell me how much of everyday life it is. What is the last thing you do before you sleep? What is the first thing you do when you wake up? For most people, it's to check their phone or scroll of social media. Could it be that these things have become distractions from you looking unto Jesus? This world is full of distractions, and there are so many things that want to pull you away from the Lord. Just imagine how different your relationship would be with the Lord if you spent 50% of the time you spend on social media praying unto the Lord or reading the Word of God at the feet of Jesus. How different would your life be? Is your heart beating for Jesus Christ? Is your heart passionate for the Lord Jesus Christ? Are your eyes looking unto the Lord Jesus Christ? Because that is the Christian life. The Christian life begins with looking unto Jesus and it ends with looking unto Jesus. But in the middle of the start and the end of a Christian life, there are thousands of distractions that attempt to steal our attention and love for Christ. According to the latest data, the average amount of time spent on social media worldwide is set to hit 147 minutes, or 2 hours and 27 minutes a day in 2022. From 2012 to 2022, the average time spent on social media worldwide increased by nearly one whole hour or 57 minutes, or 63.3%. The average person spends two hours of their day on social media, and we still find time to watch TV or our favorite streaming platforms. Distractions are real. I am not saying don't ever watch your TV show or never use your favorite social media platforms. All I wanna do is ask you one question. Have you lost your love for Christ? Because for some of us, we need to come to the conclusion that we are not living lives that show that Jesus Christ is our first love. We have to be honest. This is a hard message to listen to, but it is for your own good. We can't say we love God and give Him a 25 second prayer in the morning, yet we spend two hours watching TV. The world is shaped for people like you and I to be busy, busy, busy. The world is shaped for people like you and I to be more and more distracted, distracted, distracted. Is this happening to you? I hope not. Are you becoming too busy for God? I hope not. Are you focused more on the here and the now and not for eternity? Are you distracted by the cares of this world? I hope not. Has the devil shifted your mind on things on this earth and not on eternal things? I hope not. As Christians, we cannot allow ourselves to be conformed to the culture of this world. The culture of this world is all about today and this life. Romans 12 verse 2 Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, His good, pleasing, and perfect will. The devil being the god of this world has constructed a culture, a society that lures mankind into thinking that this life is all there is. 2 Corinthians 4 verse 3 and 4 But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the god of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not. Lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. The gospel message confronts you with the reality that you will die, and that you will then be judged by an eternal God. 
The gospel message attests to this. And one of the ways the devil hides this gospel message is by being too busy, keeping an individual too busy for God. This world does not want you to be ready for the greatest appointment of your life. There is an appointment that all men and women must keep, and that appointment is with God. The Bible tells us this very clearly. Hebrews 9 verse 27, And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but this after the judgment. You cannot avoid this subject. This is something that all men and women must deal with. So I ask you the question again. Are you ready to meet God? Are you prepared? Yes, you have prepared your 401k. Yes, you have prepared for retirement. Yes, you have prepared for your children's future. But are you preparing to meet God? Don't you want to be ready to meet God? Don't you want to be ready to meet God? Don't you want to be ready for that day when it comes? I am not here to try to make you feel good with a fluffy feel-good gospel that raises your self-esteem. What I am preaching about today is not to make you feel good. I am not going to try to get you to live your best life today. I am not going to tell you five godly principles to make more money. I am not going to talk to you about ten steps to your breakthrough. On the grand scheme of things, none of those things matter. What matters is you and your God, that on that day of judgment, am I ready? Am I prepared? What good is it to have all the money in the world and still spend an eternity in hell? What good is it to be a king or a queen on this earth and still spend an eternity in hell? What good is it for you to suffer in this life and still spend an eternity in hell? There are so many things on the internet about self-development and self-help books and how to start your own business or how to get a better gym body, or how to earn more money. All of these things are fine. I encourage you to earn more money. I encourage you to look after your health. I encourage you to develop yourself. But that is not my topic for today. My topic here for you today is important. It is about your soul. You are an eternal being that will never cease to exist. My topic today is not about this little 80 years you will be on this earth, no. My topic is about your eternity. In either heaven or hell, the Bible says, Isaiah 55 verse 6, Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Right now, you can seek God and you can find him. Prioritize God above all else and make time to seek him. Prioritize God. Are you distracted? Is this happening to you? I hope not. Are you becoming too busy for God? I hope not. Are you focused on the here and the now and not on eternity? Are you distracted by the cares of this world? I hope not. Has the devil shifted your mind on things on this earth and not on eternal things? I hope not. In the last days, the Bible told us that there will be something that takes away from our love for God. In the last days, 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 4 says, People will be lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. Pleasure is a distraction, a bad distraction. There is a pleasure in fornication. There is a pleasure in adultery. There is a pleasure in sexual immorality. There is a pleasure in sowing discord. There is a pleasure in getting revenge. There is a real pleasure in drugs. There is a real pleasure in alcohol. There is a pleasure in the sins of this world. But allow me to read you one verse, 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 6. But she that liveth in pleasure is dead while she liveth. The pleasure of sin never lasts. Pleasure is a distraction. There are some people who make a decision to get serious with their relationship with God. And the moment they do that, a man or woman they are interested in walks into their life and distracts them. When you place the desires of your physical body above the demands of the Spirit of God, then you have taken up the religion of pleasure. Meanwhile, the Bible establishes the fact the demands of the Spirit is contrary to the appetites of the flesh. If we choose to obey and be in subjection to the Spirit of God, then we must put our bodies under subjection. But we cannot fulfill the desires of the flesh and please God at the same time. When we give higher consideration to our flesh and its unrestrained desires, we are practicing the religion of pleasure because the only language that our flesh understands and flows best with is nothing but pleasure. However, 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 6 says that she who lives in pleasure is dead 
while she is alive. The word, quote, pleasure, according to that passage, is interpreted as excessive luxury, to be voluptuous or to be wanton. Before Paul made mention to this to Timothy, he was addressing how that true widows ought to live a life of total consecration to God. Thereafter, he stated that any woman who gives herself to sexual pervasion is dead while she is alive. This does not in any way exonerate men. Any man who also is given to lust and the religion of pleasure is dead while he is alive. Pleasure is a distraction, and in the last days, more and more people will be distracted by sinful pleasure. As a believer, we are to continually look unto Jesus and stave away any distractions. Stave away anything that attempts to pull our gaze away from the one we love. Prioritize God. There are so many distractions in this life. For some people, their distraction is money. For others, their distraction is sports. For others, their distraction is how they look in the mirror. We need to focus on what matters. Don't waste your life away on things that do not matter. There's one thing that matters, and you should prioritize Him. Also in the last days, perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves. Covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers. It takes the grace of God to change us, folks. How can you be saved if you're not willing to repent? And the Lord Jesus Christ said, except you repent, you shall all likewise perish.